Well, hi there. I'm here today with a whole mess of snakes and they look very, very different from one another. But as it turns out, they're all ball pythons. Ball pythons come in a wide range of different color and pattern morphs. And these are actually a pretty great showing of the great variation that exists whoop, in ball pythons, but it's better than that because these are all siblings from the same clutch that I hatched out just a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to share that with you and if you are curious about how on earth you could end up with so much variation in color and pattern in one clutch of ball pythons then you are going to enjoy our genetics videos that talk all about the genetics of ball pythons and how you could end up pairing two snakes together and get just like a rainbow made out of snake skittles. I love these things. I want to talk to you today about breeding ball pythons because it's a pretty neat process. And this started for me sometime late last year when I started putting two snakes together that are my Mojave spider with something else in her, but I don't know what it is, female. Her name is Sunshine, and this little baby here is almost an exact clone of her. And I would love to know what that extra something special is. If you have any ideas, please let us know. But I paired her up with my banana kingpin that you've probably seen in our banana ball python genetics video. He was in there, and these are their babies. So what happened is a few months later, after I'd paired them together, I walked in one day. Well, actually, what happened before I walked in is I knew that that female was working on some eggs, and you can usually tell because a female that has been eating really well all of a sudden will stop eating. She'll stop eating because she's running out of space inside of her body, and even though she's stopped eating, she keeps getting bigger. And so I knew some eggs were coming, and one day I came out and there were eight eggs. And female pythons will coil around those eggs and they will protect them, actually all the way up until they hatch. Female pythons can even, even shiver to keep those eggs warm, which is quite amazing. They, they'll shiver and, and just using their muscles like that creates heat, and so that's actually endothermy. These snakes are, are using endothermy, which is just creating heat with their bodies in order to keep their eggs warm. And they'll do that all the way until they hatch. But that can be a little bit troublesome, especially keeping the humidity and temperatures just right. So in captivity, a lot of times, you can actually leave them with the female, with their mother, but a lot of times the best way to go is to remove those eggs from the female and place them in an incubator. Now, of course, the female doesn't really want to let that clutch of eggs go. And Sunshine's kind of a grumpy ball python to start with. So the process of removing those eggs from her was a little bit nerve-wracking, but I, I've done it before. And You just kind of work and you uncoil her and you get her off from around those eggs and you pull them out and the eggs actually will all stick together. So it's actually pretty easy to get the whole clump of eggs. And you want to mark the top of the eggs so that you know the top from the bottom because unlike bird eggs, reptile eggs, generally speaking, shouldn't be turned. They shouldn't roll, and actually the baby can end up drowning inside the egg if the eggs turn. So you want to mark where the top is from the bottom, and then you put them on a proper incuba incubation medium, which is going to be something like perlite, and I use vermiculite and perlite mixed, and you put that in with the eggs, you get it just the right, the right amount of, of moisture in there so that the eggs are humid but not so wet that they'll mold and you stick them in the incubator and then you wait and you wait uh, just a little bit under two months and then one day what you'll find is that the eggs will be slit open just a little bit some people get a little bit over anxious and they'll cut their eggs open because they want to see what they've got in there because it is pretty dang exciting to see what might be inside those eggs but the truth is it's probably better for them not to do this and so I wait all the way until the baby snakes start to come out on their own. And then, if necessary, 
I might help some of them get their eggshell open a little bit wider so that they can get out easily. But you do not want to pull the babies out of the eggs. You want to let them stay in there and come out on their own because what they're doing is they're reabsorbing the rest of their yolk. They've been feeding off this yolk the whole time they've been growing and when, they, when it comes time to hatch, usually there's still a little bit of yolk left and they're not going to start eating right away once they come out of the egg. So they need to store up that yolk inside of their belly so they have a little bit to feed on for a little while. And when they first come out, they've got kind of a, a waxy skin on them. They're not quite as bright and brilliant as they're going to be in a few sheds and not even as bright as they are right now. These guys have only had their very first shed. And so for the first couple weeks, they're just going to hang out, feed off that yolk, and, and then eventually they're going to get ready to shed. And once they shed off that skin, they come out really bright and beautiful like this. And by the time that they've had that first shed, you're going to want to separate them all into their own enclosures. Ball pythons normally don't eat each other, but sometimes when they get stressed, they can. And when baby snakes eat each other, usually what happens is you end up losing both snakes. So you don't want to do that. You want to separate them all out into their own individual enclosures and then you want to start offering them food and you'll usually begin with some sort of live food like a live pinky mouse and because a lot of times they don't understand yet they're not very good at feeding in general and so they need something that really 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 seems like natural food once they get a few a few meals in them then you can try giving them a frozen thawed mouse. We're actually going to make a video on how to prepare a frozen thawed mouse pretty soon. It might appear right there. And then you'll get to check that out. But you can, you can eventually switch them over to frozen thawed, which is a lot easier and a lot safer way to feed them. But right at first, they're probably going to need you to have some access to live pinky mice or, or rat pups. And once you get them eating, they're going to start growing and they're going to grow up into incredible ball pythons. And this clutch is about as exciting as a ball python clutch can be. Some of you who know a little bit about me know I love these all white blue eyed snakes called the blue eyed leucistic. They're what got me excited about ball pythons in the first place. And now it's just gone to another level. I am so excited about this clutch. I'm so excited that you were here to share it with me. I'll try to keep you updated on how they're doing. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. They're so cute and little. They look like little worms. <laughs> they look like sperm. That's what I was thinking this whole time. <laughs> this slippery table is thrown.